live from Kiloland Media Group. Midday in Kiloland. Coming up, a grand jury has indicted a former Centerville mayor in last month's deadly shooting. Details coming up. Plus, we take you to Normandy for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Hansen. The former Centerville mayor accused in last month's deadly shooting has been indicted on nine felony accounts. 64-year-old Jay Ostrom is facing a list of charges including first and second degree murder. The Attorney General's office says 26-year-old Paul Frankus, 21-year-old Zachary Frankus, and 35-year-old Timothy Richmond were all shot by Ostrom on May 27th. The South Dakota DCI is leading the investigation. Ostrom is being held in the Minnehaha County Jail on a $1 million cash bond. His next court appearance is scheduled for June 20th at the McCook County Courthouse. A 17-year-old boy has been arrested in connection to a shooting earlier this week. 17-year-old Novotny Green and 16-year-old Emily Lopez are charged with first-degree robbery and three counts of aggravated assault. Uh, police say there are other suspects, but no arrests have been made. Court documents say a 16-year-old boy was found shot early Monday morning near East 6th Street. Uh, he was taken to the hospital where he told police that he intended to meet up with Lopez when he got into the SUV that uh, she was driving. Green and two others robbed him. Police did not have an update on his condition. An event happening this weekend is aimed at preventing suicide and supporting those who have lost loved ones. The Helpline Center's a step forward to prevent suicide is Saturday morning at Faywick Park in Sioux Falls. It will feature a 1.5 mile walk and a remembrance ceremony. We encourage everybody to sign up, you know, even kiddos and elderly people, everybody of all ages are certainly welcome to attend this event. Coming up tonight on Kelloland News, we will introduce you to the honorary speaker of the event and why she is sharing her story. Turning now to a first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Scott Munt. Another windy one out there, huh, Scott? Yeah, it's one of those days when I walk outside, I just continue to lose more and more hair. <laughs> uh, we have wind gusts over 40 miles per hour across eastern Kelloland. Wind advisory has been put in place across the east and southeast. Uh, we do have those uh, northwest winds sustained anywhere from 25, 30 to 35 miles per hour to cover eastern Kettleland. So let's look at the, our sustained winds. When you look at the gusts, we're now approaching 50 in Sioux Falls at 48, 46 in Brookings, and we have that wind gust of 45 in Aberdeen and in Marshall. So there's a look at the wind advisory, north central through eastern Kettleland. They'll take us to about seven o'clock. And you can see one of the computer models here suggesting as we do get into the evening hours, these winds will eventually start to drop off, especially maybe around that eight to nine o'clock hour. You will notice how those winds do drop. And in Watertown, more or less the same thing. We'll continue with wind gusts in the 40s over the next couple of hours. And then as we hit the late evening hours, uh, those winds will subside. This is all happening with mostly sunny skies and I think that will continue through the day so Kettleland Live Doppler HD is dry. We're at 72 in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen. We have 76 in Mitchell, 73 in Huron, 75 degrees in Rapid City. So dry today, but that rain is set to return for tomorrow. This is Futurecast, showing by maybe the midday hour. We can have a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms in central and south central South Dakota. We'll see if those make their way into southeastern Kettleland during the afternoon and evening. Well, our forecast for today showing the strong winds, temperatures in the 70s to near 80 degrees. Tonight, mostly clear skies, light winds, temperatures fall to the 40s and 50s. And for tomorrow, you can expect temperatures in the 70s and 80s with lighter wind. I'll have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Well, the heroes of World War II, both those who died and those who survived, are being honored today in ceremonies marking 80 years since D-Day. That's the start of the Allied invasion against Nazi Germany that led to the end of the war in Europe. Elaine Cobb is in Normandy, France, where President Biden warned that democracy is now more at risk than at any point since World War II. President Biden and the First Lady bowed their heads in front of a wreath at the American cemetery overlooking Omaha Beach, where more than 9,000 U.S. soldiers are buried. Monsieur Bill Cassasa. Earlier, he was joined by French President Emmanuel Macron, who bestowed the Legion of Honor, France's highest award, on 11 U.S. World War II veterans. 
in memory of those who fought here, died here, literally saved the world here. Let us be worthy of their sacrifice. The president marked the 80 years since the D-Day invasion by saying the U.S. and its allies will not walk away from Ukraine as it continues to defend itself against Russia. We're living in a time when democracy is more at risk across the world than any point since the end of World War II, since these beaches were stormed. Before the ceremony, the president met with some of the men who survived World War II, all of them pushing 100 years old or even older. Onofrio Zikeri from Syracuse, New York, was 21 years old when he landed here. We landed and we had a crawl on the beach, really. I looked over and there's this GI. He was sitting on his helmet and he was holding his guts. The war brings nothing but misery, nothing but misery. With each passing year, fewer and fewer veterans remain to tell the world what happened that day. Elaine Cobb, CBS News, Normandy, France. Uh, France did not invite Russia to the commemorations, even though it was a key ally during World War III, excuse me, World War II, because of its war against Ukraine. Still ahead, why more female doctors of color are leaving their jobs. And we take you to Istanbul, Turkey, where a cat took to the stage during an orchestra performance. And in weather, we'll continue to follow the strong wind across eastern Kettleland. More details on your forecast coming up. <laughs> 